Welcome to Adobe Photoshop. We're now in Photoshop and I downloaded a great template. I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the resource guide uh, to lots of different uh, resources you can use to put your logo on mockups. And it's from graphicburger.com. This is a, a yoga pants, which would be very fitting for the type of client that we have. And uh, if you don't haven't messed with mockups, I'm going to do this first one slower so you guys can get a chance to learn how these work. So what we're going to do is you're going to see, usually you'll see these little red highlights right here. This is how you know that's the layer you can modify with your logo. So I'm going to double click right here in this area. I'm not going to double click on this mask. This is a layering mask. We're not even going to touch those. We're just going to double click right here on the red layer. It's going to open up a new window. And this is going to load right here on this uh, little belt here. So I'm going to load in our little logo. We're just going to do our one color logo right here because that's going to work better without the type. So we're just bringing in the logo mark. We're going to make it kind of a size. We might need to go back and adjust it and we'll do that just to test it out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to close this new tab that opened up and we're going to, it's going to ask us to save it. So we're going to save it. It's going to, it's going to run an algorithm. It's going to run a script and it's going to automatically adapt it to the mock-up. So now we know that's a little bit big. So let's open it back up. And let's make it a lot smaller right there in the center. And let's go ahead and close it up, save it, and it's going to automatically populate. And once again, I might want to make it a little bit smaller yet again. And hopefully this will be the last time. Make sure it's centered right there. You see that little pink line? That's how I know it's centered. Close the tab, automatically populate. And now we can even adapt it to some similar colors. So if you go down here, you see the purple, and you can always tell what layer, on, layer you are on by toggling it on and off. So that is the belt, and this is the base right here. So we can make it all white pants if we want. We can even bring in some of our branded colors, and I got a hex code here. So I can copy and paste my hex code and double click and bring that in here. I'm just going to paste it right here in the hex code. Click OK. I can bring in our lighter color and I think it might be better reversed. So let's try the belt. Or not really the belt, but whatever you would call that in there. And then that, let's make that the darker color. And there you have it. You have a little logo pants here. And this is the version I came up with the class and this is the one I came up with before filming the class uh, when I was trying to figure out what logo design I should do. So that's, you can see how the one I did in the class, you know, varies a little bit because when you go through this process, you think through things a little bit differently. So there's the yoga pants. And so all you have to do is save this as a JPEG. You can bring it into Illustrator. You can crop it just like we did here in this particular template that I have that you can download. So that was pretty easy and mockups are very, very simple. So we're going to do the next one. We're going to do a water bottle. Here we are. I have the water bottle mockup. You can download this. You can find the link in the resources or head over to graphicburger.com and find a mockup there. What I love about mockups is they're fully customizable as long as you understand the basics of Photoshop and how layers work. So I'm going to go ahead and here's my little red layer. I can see right away that's the layer that I need to modify. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it and you see that it has this little white kind of border on it, but I can change that however I'd like. So I'm going to double click it and you have the entire bottle. So if you want to make a longer label, you just bring it up higher and it becomes a longer label. So you can really do whatever you want here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these and I'm not even going to have a label because I think I'm looking for a pure uh, clear bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and drag over my white version, center aligned over to the mock-up, just like the last one. These are pretty simple and you just have to get an idea for size. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, close it down. I'm going to save that window. It's going to automatically populate and we have it right there. And some mockups give you the chance to move it around when you have the layer selected. So you can go ahead and move it around, make that a little bit harder to do. That's okay, you just double click on your layer and just do it back into the window. And then we might wanna add a little bit of a label, so water bottle or gym and spa, or something that kind of indicates uh, what kind of bottle this is or what kind of company this is. So we're going to do that right here. You can do anything you want. You can add your own text here. So we're going to type in gym and spa. Right there, I have some nice wide spacing with my typography to keep it the high-end brand look. 
and I'm just going to tuck it underneath there and I'm also going to make this white. So here it is applied to the bottle and this is where we can get a chance to see how it looks on products. We can zoom in and say, okay, I need to change the balance of the logo for a particular product. You don't always have to use exactly what you produce for the logo with the words. Sometimes you have different variations that work really good on certain products. And for this case, I think I'm going to make this symbol a little bit bigger uh, so that it can have a bigger pre presence when viewed from far away, which most people will be viewing the water bottles from a distance on a shelf. So you just got to keep that in mind and this will help you come up with different variations of your logo arrangement. So this is your kind of your typical variation and we can even think about going, okay, so now that I'm seeing it on the bottle, perhaps we do a little bit of a bigger size of the wave. And we would kind of perfect that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and replace this. Go ahead and keep Jim and Spa and see if this has a better look on the water bottle. So this is why I love testing out stuff on mock-ups. You get to see it practically applied and see what different kind of versions you need for the logo. You need several of them so that the client can have a lot of flexibility when applying it. Okay, so let's close it up and see how it looks. Looks a little bit better. I can go ahead and move it up here, get that center aligned, kind of zoom out. So yeah, there's all sorts of amazing things you could do. You can actually change the background here. You could even change the cap. So if you toggle this off, you could change the cap color, which is kind of cool if you wanted to change that. So I can go to image adjustments and go to maybe color balance and just kind of do some, if you're really good with Photoshop, then you'll be right at home. I'm not going to focus so much on Photoshop in this class because I really want to keep it to logo design. And I'm already going a little bit further with you guys by showing mock-ups. But yeah, you could change it to however you'd like. You can just even make it black and white, just like that. And you can change the background as well. You can change the background color. You can make it black, look really kind of sleek, just like that. We can even add waves. So I'm going to go ahead and download a photo from Pexels.com of some waves and get that into Photoshop. I have imported a photo I found on Pexels.com and I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. And you could really do whatever you want with the mock-up as long as you can know Photoshop enough to kind of edit that and see. Notice how the bottle kind of shines through there. And so this, if you toggle things on and off, you can kind of see the effect it has. So there's the highlights and shadows. So we can screen this back a little bit. So we could do different blending modes up here up top. Of course, blending modes are a whole nother class, whole nother lesson. We can kind of see how certain things can look with blending modes. And I love the newest version of Photoshop where it gives you a preview of the blending modes without having to select it. For many years, we had to select each one to find out what effect it had. Ooh, that's looking really neat. I teach a Photoshop class as well if you're interested in all these little ways to do Photoshop kind of work. So great, here we go. So there's our finished product. Um, kind of a great way to have a portfolio piece or to present it to the client in a much more elegant way. And it also helps you figure out, do I need to adjust the icon in certain situations? You know, a logo is not stuck forever in that arrangement. There's lots of different arrangements of logos that you can have. And so this kind of helps you figure that out. Every good logo needs to look good on a t-shirt. So we're going to do that with this t-shirt mock-up. Once again, found at graphicburger.com, but you can use any Photoshop mock-up you'd like. So we can customize colors. We can do anything. So what I thought we'd do is go ahead and start off with our red layer. I'm going to go ahead and double click that. Go ahead and remove that. So now we've got to think about a t-shirt design. We might want to do a very similar kind of style and layout than the water bottle because we really want that wave to show through. So we go bring that in. We could do all white or we can do our two-tone logo. This is where we're going to test that out and see what will work best. So we're going to close that up. And there it is. We can kind of shift it around a little bit. If I go ahead and go up here to auto select and unselect that, it won't automatically select other layers. So I just went up here to auto select and unselected it. So now we can get a, a, a good idea on size and balance on the t-shirt itself. And once again, this is starting to get more into branding a little bit outside of logo design, but it's really good for presentation when you're building up that portfolio, which we're going to talk about next in the class. So now we have to figure out the right blue, but we already have some in our branded colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this one right here. Got a hex code. Of course, you can always use CMYK and other colors, but since this is going to be a digital mock-up, we're going to just 
paste that code right in there. And wow, that is bright. So now we can kind of figure out in terms of colors. It's going to show up a little bit different on the mock-up because there's highlights and shadow layers on top of it, which is going to manipulate the actual color a little bit. So if you were to get a color t uh, match a t-shirt color to that color, it'd actually be a lot darker in real life. So we're just going to adjust that just a little bit to make it a little bit darker to kind of get the right color. So kind of have a nice aqua color. Of course, we can try out different arrangements of the logo. We can go back and do the two-tone logo as well. Um, so there you have it. You just double click this and you can change the t-shirt color. Um, you do your red layer to be able to edit and you could do any size, any arrangement, any symbol. There's also a back side of the t-shirt if you want to experiment with that. And there's also uh, shadows. Just toggle any layer off to know kind of what kind of effect it's having. That's kind of making the symbol a little bit darker, but it adds a little bit more realistic shadows to it. So that's why they have that. So there we have it. We have a t-shirt, a bottle, and a couple of awesome... Uh, mock-ups you can add to your portfolio um, and speaking of portfolio we're going to be doing that in the next section of the class um, we have one more section to get through we need to be able to export all of the files that we created let's say the client says I love your work let me get the files this is going to be a little bit more of a detailed lesson it's going to be a little bit um, arduous and, and detailed but this is a very essential step knowing what kind of files to send to the clients because we have a lot of different ones if you look in Adobe Illustrator we have all these different files we need to get this to a client and in a way that they never have to contact us again for a file 